We are thrilled to be joined by Joey Votto. Frazier has been looking forward to this for a long time. He's with us. I like that look, too. On foul territory. Hey, what do you think of Frazier's setup, by the way, Votto? Looking good back there? Yeah, he's got a nice batting cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so here he goes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love him. Hey, I love him, man. There's nobody yeah. better than this guy right here, man. He's going to tell you how it is. And he's not afraid to shy away from anything. That's why I love you're, it. You're like, like on that. Todd and I played together. Uh, for for people listening, people watching, Todd and I played together for a while. He came up uh, when I was probably five, six years into league. And and the common theme among young players is stay quiet, oh, stay no. in your locker, mind your business. And Todd came out and just like let us all have it like has a leader streak is going to say something is going to challenge us he and i i mean i'm sure you've said this before you and i have like dusted heads a couple times but of course. i will say i will say you were a great teammate you helped us play better and you were a, i don't think you get enough credit you were an excellent excellent player one of the better defensive third base you you're right behind scott for me as far as best defensive third base ones i wow. play with you played super hard you knew the game uh, you were a star in Cincinnati for a while there. We were really lucky to have you. No, I, I appreciate that. Guys, you heard that, right? Man, I uh, love my, the players. My IFB no. went out. Oh, sorry. Wait, uh, I couldn't hear anything. Breaking Wait, up. we got to start over. <laughs> hey. Wait, what was that? Todd, what? Hey, Wait, Joey. I want, what, Todd? Joey, forget about them. I want to bring up a funny story, man, back in the day. And I, and I hope you remember this because I'll never forget it. Remember Don Long? He was our hitting coach, you know, one of those years. Course. You were hitting in batting practice, and sometimes you get frustrated in batting practice. You know, you slam the yeah. bat against the side of the, you know, the yeah. turtle, they call it. Do you, I, I hope you remember this because I, I, I haven't told you this, but I hit Don Long in the leg. I said, watch this. You were struggling a little bit. When I mean struggling, you were batting like 280 at the time. And I said, watch, I'm going to get him going. I, I, I said, Joey, man, wake up. What are you doing in there? Because you took a pitch and slammed the bat. And you remember what you said to me after you got out of the batting cage? I remember that that back and forth vividly. So I didn't want to hit that day, and I was a little gas. And li I literally never hit below 300 when I played with you, just out of spite for you. Just a spite, just to, spite. To spite you. <laughs> and, like, I – I just didn't want to hit, so I was kind of hitting easy. And you were in the back. You were in the back. You were like, "What? Well, you know, pick it up. Like, why? If you're going to swing, why are you even in here wasting our time sort of thing? And I was like, I about lost it. And I muttered something to myself. I get back in. I do the same thing. And I think, like, you may have said something again or it may have been the one-off, but I go, I go, um, I go, why don't you worry about yourself? And yeah. you gave me something back. And I go, you and I, we're going to go to the computer room. We're going to Google my name. We can take a peek at my numbers, yep. and you can shut the F up sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. And, exactly. Uh, exactly. I can't tell you how. I mean, you and I had those exchanges. I'll tell you. I'll tell everyone else one story. So we had those exchanges. And I think it's probably because I've got a little sensitive streak to me, or I'm a little prideful, or I took you seriously, or I – and, like – I didn't, I didn't realize how, what you were trying to do yeah. and you were trying to fire guys up, get guys going, challenge guys, also fire yourself up so we could be better as a team. And I remember Devin Mezzarocco, a catcher on our team, all-star catcher who we both played with for a long time. And I'm laying on the couch and I watched Devin, <laughs> Devin walk past you and you, you walk past him and you go, what's up jackass. And then Devin goes, Devin goes, Hey Todd. And keeps walking. And I'm yes. like, that's how you deal with him. That's yeah. how you deal with him. <laughs> and from that point forward, I was like, oh, my goodness. So that's how you deal with him sort of thing. But, no, I, okay. I, I tell people to this day, tell to this day when I play with Todd, that he was the most challenging but the most helpful teammate I play with just because he wanted he wanted to push everyone. So I admire that about him. You know, no, I a AJ that. on the other hand, yeah. AJ on the other, other hand, I couldn't stand. I have nothing redeeming to say about him. So, <laughs> hey, so I got a story for you. Now it's my turn to tell stories about Joey Votto. Oh boy! So when I obviously you were in National League, I was in the American League most of my career. But at the end of my career, when I was with Atlanta and St. Louis, you were with the Reds. So we played you. We used yes, to have I a contest. Reds, it would sure. be like everybody would everybody would throw before the game. We're playing the Reds. We're like right, whoever gets on first. 
whoever gets the strangest comment from Joey Votto wins, and we'll buy him dinner. So we would all get on first, and we would ask you the most outrageous thing. And we, whatever yeah. you would say, I, I mean, there was some thing I don't even remember the stories, but it was like, I remember Freddie got on first, and you were talking about, like, the sky or the stars. And I got one time I got on first, and you had the tightest pants on I've ever seen. And I yeah. just touched oh your God. I touched your butt, right? <laughs> and I said, man, Joe, you look amazing in these pants. And you just looked down, and you kind of stuck your, your ass out to the side, and you're like, you're right, I do. <laughs> right? So then, this is what I was with St. Louis. So then we went over to Milwaukee, and St. Louis was there. They had an off day, and we were playing the, the Brewers. And Rosie, the clubhouse guy, had all the red uniforms. They hang them up, right, in the back in Philly I, or in, in uh, Milwaukee. I said, Rosie, I'm putting Votto's. You don't even know this. I'm like, I'm putting Votto's uniform on. I want to see how tight it is. And I put him, I went full uniform. I couldn't get the pants on. They were so tight, right? And then the mm -hmm. next time we played him, he had baggy pants on. I'm like, Joey, you switch pants. You're, you're, and he said something to me. He's like, well, I didn't like the way you touched me last time. <laughs> and I was like, yes. I said that? Oh, yeah. You're like, yeah, I didn't like the way you touched my butt or something. You said something oh, like that. Oh, really? No, yeah, no, no, no. I, like, I, yes. I, Usually, usually at first base, I'm I'm like fooling, playing around with. Are we allowed to cuss on here? Absolutely, yes, of course. Usually at first, I'm fucking with everybody. So like, I, I I unless I really really get to know you. Like whenever Todd, I mean Todd and I played together for years, so he'd get to first base and I'd ask him how the city was when he played for the Mets. I ask him how his family's doing. I ask him how, his, you know, just like things that like were like I cared about how his well being. I asked him whether or not he was happy to be back. But like, if I don't know you, to me, it's like, I get, I'll say hello, but if I get a read of like, uh, someone that's willing to play or someone that I feel like is being like, uh, not eye to eye is like being dismissive of me, I'll usually mess around with them. But, uh, AJ, you were, you were, um, you kindly, like constantly gave me that energy. I mean, I come to the plate and you'd like. I don't remember things you say because you're a forgettable player, but you come to the plate <laughs> oh my. and I would be like, I'd be like, you know, um, I'd get a little comment from you and I'd be like, why is he, you know, interrupting me right now? Like, I was messing with you, you were messing with me and I was trying to mess up your thought process, right? No, you're up there, no. You're grinding. No. You're trying to squat, stand up, squat. I don't know how I can get the ball for so I'm like, well, maybe if I say something. Trying to get to ball four, I've got like uh, 2,100 hits. What do you mean? Yeah. Tell him, Joe. Joe, tell him. I mean, hey. What are you know, talking people, about? Hey, Joe, we're not all Todd. We all have 2,000 hits. That's not a big deal. I mean, you get to 3,000, let me know. But Todd ain't got 2,000. I got 2,000. You got 2,000. You don't understand this conversation. I looked up your numbers before this this um, uh, this interview, just like trying to get a gauge of how much time and how much. I mean, you played a long time. And um, – were a really successful player. And we only, I only got to catch you. I think, I think I caught you a little bit when you were with the White Sox, but generally speaking, like on, on some of your other teams, but I thought that, uh, you know, I, I playing against you, I, I knew you had a reputation for not only being uh, a good, uh, a good leader, but also a, a really good offensive player. So um, yeah, I, I uh, obviously 2000 hits goes without saying with, with your career. So, so Joe, I want, I got to tell you this also, when we played, you have 2000 hits, yeah. right? Yeah, two thousand. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. How did it feel? Game. How did it feel? How did it, it feel? Was, I was old when I got it, so I was just happy to get there because I was, I was, <gasps> I was like, I you mean, know, they're whipping the horse, and I was whipping myself <laughs> to try to get there. So, Amazing. you yeah. know, the scouting report on you, right? Is when I think we were in Texas. No, uh, yeah, no, I don't know where we were. Maybe St. Louis, and they said Joey Votto, he won't swing. So the scouting report on you is just throw it right down the middle and force him to swing, right? I mean, literally, that was a scouting report, like. The first couple of bats, just throw it down the middle because you were, you know, that that's, you know, your 500 on base, 400, you know, whatever it was. So Mike Maddox, I think, was our pitching coach, and he's like, hey, just throw it down the middle. You have to make this guy swing. Otherwise, he won't swing. And we tried that, and I think we played you in a three-game series, and the first, like, four bats, it was like boom, 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 boom. And then about the third at bat, fourth at bat, you're like, screw this, whack, home run. I'm like, we ain't doing that anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to it, – it's – the at-bats are – are um, – are, I think complicated because I try to gain as much and on a serious note, as much fooling around as we've done. Like I tried earlier in my career. Um, I used to carry around the Ted Williams uh, science of hitting. And um, one of the, one of the messages in that particular book was um, gather, gather as much information as you can early 
in, in especially in your first at bat. And so early early in the game, I try to read and take as much as I could um, to be able to gather information. And I always felt confident with two strikes that I could not only get a hit, but I could still power the ball. And um, at bat second, the second and third at bat, I had information. The game was slower just because you fall in line, fall in kind of like the groove of the game. You find the timing of the pitcher. And during that time, AJ, and I, 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 I'm, I think – Todd can agree with this also, pitchers would go a third, maybe even a fourth time. So for me, the first two at-bats, I'm trying to get something, of course, but I feel like for the greater good of the game, it'd be best if I gather as much information as I could. And then as the, as the game moved along, when I felt like I, I knew what I was going to get and what I could damage, I would take advantage of that in the second, possibly mostly the third and fourth at-bat. Hey, Joe, I want you to explain to everybody right now your, your routine. Like, when I talk about hitting routines, when I talk to kids in camps and stuff, I always bring you up because you're, you're one, you're one of the hardest worker I've ever seen as a hitter. And I want, guys, I want guys to understand, like, your routine in the cages, what, 30 minutes before the game was just as powerful. Like, your swing was just – it was a game routine during practice as it was during the game. Like, did you – prep yourself to be, I wanted to be game ready for that first pitch. Can you explain that to like a kid who's watching right now, how your, your routine is? You know, um, I don't know if it's because, you know, I wasn't, it, I, I remember seeing old highlights of you being, um, you as a little league player being successful right away. Uh, and you 10 years old, 12 years old, 14, what uh, you were always a, a success as a younger player. And so, yeah. um, I wasn't a good young player. I was. I, I felt like I worked my way into my success. A combination of, you know, a little bit of physical late blooming with like the reps um, led to my success. So as long as, and even as I sit here right now, as I think about my work day, because I'm at, I'm at our spring training complex and we're about to have a night game and I have to prep for it. I think about making sure that I work uh, as well as I physically can and get as much as, out of myself today as I possibly can and work at an intensity that's as close to the game and work at a precision, you know, work with as much precision as I can that's as, as close to the needs of the game. And I've tried to do that over the last, excuse me, two, three decades, however long I've been working at this. And I've always felt like it's come from work I feel like, you know, that, that, uh, the, I guess it's, a, a, a term, uh, deliberate practice. I've been, I've always done that. Not, I didn't know what I was doing until, you know, probably my thirties, but, um, you know, I, I just have never been a natural and I feel like the work has led me to, to having, to having some success in this game. So, um, it's always been about desperation. Like I feel like an urgency. I feel desperation. I feel, um, a, a level of like discomfort and feeling out of place unless I get that work in and unless I feel, feel, and I have to feel, uh, like the work is helping me feel sharper. So, um, I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, it's like some guys just have it. You know, I played with Griffey Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., and I remember one time him, you know, I was hitting, yeah, the great yeah, Ken Griffey is. Jr., of course, and he goes, he goes, I go, what, like, what do you, what do you, you got any advice for me or what do you do? Or, and he goes, man, I just try to have fun. I just try to have fun. But like, he's coming from a place of hitting in the, hitting off of, you know, Johnny Bench and, you know, you know, Tony Perez in the clubhouse with the big red machine or taking batting practice off of his father, Ken Griffey Sr., uh, his arm or like being a, 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 a superstar high school prospect. So it just, and I don't want to say it came easy for him, but he was like, it came, he, he just was always in it. Whereas I elected to start, I, I tried to get good at baseball at about 14 years old. Like I dedicated myself for maybe 15 years old where I just shut basketball down. I shut, you know, football down, everything down with the attempt of being the best I could. And I felt like, you know, at all times, I still to this day feel like it's just been, you know, work. I've had to work, but I'm grateful for it. So, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Um, to change gears a little bit, what's the Reds' outlook this year, man? How you guys looking? Some young guys stepping up. Uh, 
How do you feel being, you know, that veteran guy that everybody's going to look up to and kind of lean on here a little bit this year? Yeah, I, I, I really like a lot of our younger players. Um, you know, we have a potential, we have three, you know, I, I don't like giving, uh, giving too much to, to young players because I think it's unfair and I think it's unrealistic, but we've got three pitchers in Graham Ashcraft, Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo that have a chance to be uh, strong pitchers. And so I, I think some of them could, you know, some, maybe all of them could end up being all-star caliber and beyond pitchers. And then uh, we have a few position players that, you know, Johnson India won the rookie of the year a few years ago, a couple years ago, Tyler Stevenson performed well last year. We have a few core players um, that are currently on the major league roster that, that could pro- be impactful. And then we have a, a, a I think a uh, inc- like a stronger minor league system that could potentially impact the team in 2023 or 24. So I'm looking forward to watching these guys get better and watching them play. You know, it's it's interesting. Like the rigors, it's good. It's fine to be a prospect and it's fine to have early career success. But the real difficulty is being successful when it's not sexy. When you're just a major league player, just kind of plug in away, accumulating time, and you have to answer every single day, every every, every single season. And, and that, to me, is the real challenge of being a major league player. It's that saying, like, it's easy to make it, but it's hard to stay. And staying comes with, like, really answering the bell every day and performing well. We're entertainers. Our obligation is to to entertain, to, to, to perf- answer, you know, be able to answer the demands of the fans. So... Yeah. Speaking of entertaining, I mean, last night's uh, World Baseball Classic or a couple nights ago, World Baseball Classic was excellent. I don't know if you guys caught that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I think if you're not a ba- if you're not if you're a baseball fan, you're definitely watching. If you're not a baseball fan, I think you should have watched it anyway. Um, question. Also, did you get asked to play in the World Baseball Classic this year? Was there a possibility yeah. or no? Yeah, there was a possibility, but with my injury, I'm I, yeah. I'm still coming back from my bicep and my rotator cuff tear. So um, I had surgery last August, and I've made progress. I'm starting to play spring training games, but I, I just got to keep plugging away. So wait, wait, who wait, who plays first? If it's you and Freeman, who plays first? Uh, I DH probably. Okay. Mm. Yeah. That's- okay. Two solid first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right pretty Freddy's, good. Two pretty good picks. Freddie's great, 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 great player. I mean, he's. He's probably the sports best, or him or Goldschmidt are the, the best two first basemen in the game right now. Now, so uh, Freddie played uh, first. I'd be happy to DH just support the team. So yeah. So you you came? Didn't you come up as a catcher? If I'm not mistaken, weren't you a catcher in the minor league? They draft players as catchers, and I think that's just like uh, a hope sort of thing. I was never going to be a catcher. <laughs> I was never- hey, hey, some of us were drafted <laughs> as catchers and we stuck there, all right? So let's not Yeah, well, it's a, it, it's amazing to be able to perform behind the plate and still perform offensively. The degree of difficulty was, you know, just I have no idea how the good offensive catchers do their job. It's amazing to me, so No, I I agree totally. So, let me give you uh, an instance here. Halfway during the season, Reds are struggling a little bit. Next thing you know, trade deadline's coming up. And they come to you and say, hey, Joey, we got an opportunity if you go to the Blue Jays or, or some other team. I say the Blue Jays because you're from Canada. Um, I know you're a Red at heart. I know you never want to leave that place. But is anything going in your mind thinking maybe, you know, if the if Toronto Blue Jays are dominating for a season? Uh, I'm thinking, um, you know, my my answer is, I have to get healthy and perform well. And I'm not trying to dismiss that question, but, um, you know, when I signed, when I signed my contract with the team, the, t- the 12 year deal, um, it was, um, there was an agreement between the both parties that, that this was a, a long-term commitment mm-hmm. and, uh, a monogamous commitment. So, um, you know, I, I I've been dedicated to, uh, the Cincinnati Reds. No one's ever heard anything about me asking for a trade, yeah. or 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 hinting at playing with another team during my entire time. And we've we've had a lean ten years. That's awesome. Uh, so I I, I I don't know. I I just it, I I had heard heard a comment about that the other day, and 
it's, you know, this is a business uh, first and foremost, and uh, there's going to be speculation, you know, from the day I signed that contract, they may have been trying to trade me for all I know. I have no idea what goes on in, in, in uh, the higher ups perspective. But um, I've never said anything, and, and my goal is to just perform well and, and honor honor my contract. So, Joey, you're, you've talked about all these things. You recently, well, I don't know if it was recently, but in the last couple of years, you've gotten on social media. And yeah. you kind of said it kind of helped you reach people and, and kind of get out of some loneliness and some stuff. They forced me at foul territory here to get on social media. So do you have any advice for me as a newbie on social media? Well, it depends on what your goals are. Um, if you're trying to, um, I think if you're trying to like connect with the fans of of this particular, is this a podcast or a radio show? What is this called? Well, how digital show. It's, digital show. It's YouTube podcast. It's kind of both. So we Everywhere. can see your face and hear your voice, whether you want to be seen or not. It all depends on what they want to listen, how they want to ingest. If I'm most honest with you, being sincere. And when I say sincere, like if you don't want to connect with people, if you don't want to be social, then the, they can tell. They can tell. Um, but the the connections can be real. The communication can be valuable for both parties. And if your goal is to add more followers or ma- add more interest to the show, you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to partly con- connect. Uh, you know, we're, we're behind a screen and just telling people things, but there's people on the other hand, on the, on the other end listening, and they want to feel like they're part of the conversation. They want to feel like, uh, they're listened to that. You have interest in them, that you care about them. And if you keep them at arm's length, that can be sensed. But if you're genuine about sharing yourself or, listening to them or communicating, um, if you're genuine about uh, wanting to have the conversation, wanting to debate the topics, wanting to present the questions to the to the players or just present the questions in general that the fans want asked, they, they'll feel listened to. You know, the best, in my opinion, I watch him all the time. I don't know if I'm going to end up doing any sort of digital content or podcasting or anything like that, but personally, I think the best is Chael Sonnen. And he does the um, he does uh, an MMA podcast, and he's always in the blog the blogs. He's in the chat rooms. He's in the comment section. He's on he's on whatever uh, tool he find he feels like it's the best way for him to listen to and communicate with the fan base, uh, and the, they feel that you know he's grown exponentially over the last year or two but in my my opinion i think that's the way you do it you really listen you listen you ask the questions and it goes from there and it all depends on what your goals are if you don't want to listen then you'll get what you get but if you really want to connect i mean then it'll it'll serve you in another way and it'll serve them also so it depends on what your goals are so what you're saying is i need to make social media my full-time job right besides this so it it depends on what you want no i know i know like I, is I, it Twitter or is it Twitter or Instagram? I have Twitter, Instagram. I have all that stuff now. You know, I'm, Twitter I'm a regular a really good... social media tycoon. Twitter's great for AJ. Twitter's twi- yeah, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter I don't like posting. Per- the, I don't like doing the po- pictures and all. I mean, I'll do it, but I don't love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. then don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Want if you don't want to do that, but like, so, um, so, so yeah. Todd asked you, like, to, like on your Instagram the other day, right? Todd asked you about the middle of the season. Well, there's a big date for you coming up in like three weeks, April fifteenth. The aliens are coming. You guys are going to be twelve and two, and then <laughs> yeah. that was on right. So that was a that was that was you fucking with us, right? Or was that like a real thing? No, that was me playing around. But um, you know, I'm still playing right now. So I, I this social media is like I, I don't I can only interact with uh, the followers and fans so much because they I don't have the excess energy to be able to give away i've got to save it for performance so i actually felt like i learned that lesson last year however with that being said i still want to let a little bit of myself out there so uh the the mainstream media the general media the regional media doesn't get to control all of my narrative um it, you know for example the other day there was a comment about um you know from the jays the reds jim bone thing 
I, I have the I have an option if I want to get on Twitter and say something, or I can say something on Instagram story, or I can just leave it to the regional media to answer the question. But it all depends on how much energy I want to give it. But you know, I don't know. I, it's for me for me social. I don't get I don't make any money from it, um, and and I find that there's more of a genuine connection with the fans. Um, at stadiums, on the streets. I mean, I get plenty of hellos on the street. I get plenty of hellos at the stadium. I'm here, to, I'm here to take pictures and sign autographs and connect with the fans. I'm genuine about that. I try to get out in the Cincinnati community and support the Youth Academy. I try to get out and say hello to the community as much as I possibly can. So I find that that's more more valuable than, than some sort of post. But, yeah. And I think fans appreciate that. 100%. Yeah. I appreciate that. As yeah. A former player. Exactly. The fan connection needs to keep happening. I mean, we're doing this every day for a reason, too, to have these kind of conversations, and they come out differently like this. The one I wanted to ask was, I mean, we were giving Todd shit in the beginning, but rather deal with Todd or, or Brandon Phillips, he can bring it, too. I mean, you play with some characters, Joey. No, 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 no. Brandon was excellent. Todd was excellent. You know, we were we were a strong club. We were a strong club for a stretch there. Um, you know, um, I, I, I miss those guys. I, there's something about playing with real professionals and I'm not saying like, I, I'm not saying anything other than when we were a really strong competitive team and, and those guys were in the infield and those guys were in the lineup and those guys were in the clubhouse. There was, I love being on a team with egos because that tells you that each one of those guys has their own sort of, um, they take control of themselves. They're responsible for themselves. They think they're a star. They think they belong at the all-star game. They think they should have been on the cover of this. They think that they should be hitting here. They should, but that's because they're good. And you accumulate enough of those guys and you got yourself a really competitive team. And that's the reason why, I mean, Brandon was fabulous. Yeah. You know, he and I, I, I said this in the media the other day, he'd sit on the other side of the clubhouse. We never spoke. He'd be on his phone. Mm -hmm. I played with him for eight, nine, ten years. We never spoke in the club. Never spoke in the clubhouse. I almost never saw him. But then we'd sit, be side by side on the field, or we'd be on the bench together, and we had our our moments. And you, that bond is stronger than you know. I'll, I'll remember Brandon for as long as I live because of of the relationship we had professionally. It's the same with Todd. You know. It, um, you know, he had, he had more of a voice in the clubhouse, but like you knew that when it came time to perform, he was going to answer that. He was going to answer that bell. He was going to perform. He was going to dig. He was going to make good decisions. He was a great defender. To me, um, I love playing with those guys, and, and that's what makes a good team. And Joe, I'll finish it with this, and we'll let you go. When we did have that little squirrel during batting practice, you took off, and I don't know if you remember, I think you got player of the month the next month. So you're welcome. For one, and, and two, it makes me really angry that you think you had anything to do with that. I, okay. Joe, you, hey, we didn't. Hey, we didn't talk for a week and a half. I, I, I hope you remember that too as well. I remember Jay Bruce coming up and be like, "Yo, dude, you need to squash this with Joey." I'm like, "I'm not squashing." Jay it. said that. Yes, he did because you and Jay were the best friends, so he told you everything. Jay, Jay went stretches where he was like, "Todd's driving me crazy," and I go, "I go, well, then you're just weak," and you know, uh, Todd. If it, you know, I don't ever remember him saying anything like that to me. But t honest to goodness, we could have gone seven years and not spoken together, and I would have been so happy about that too. So don't <laughs> you, didn't to, you didn't need to squash anything. Like if this was the first time we spoke, I would have been like, "Good, yeah. don't matter to me at all." <laughs> hey, and then let me finish with this. What I'm gonna add, I'm gonna ask you the question, but I'm gonna say the answer first, and I'm gonna think I'm right. So, what are you gonna have before the game tonight? I'm gonna say your all-time favorite bean burger. What do you think? Bean burger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Ever again? That's too good. Yeah, Ever. bean burger. Uh, I'll tell the story. So every time in Chicago, uh, um, the head clubhouse attendant. Um, um, I believe his name was Mike Burkhart, uh, um, you know, rest in peace. Rest uh, in peace, late, yes. Yeah. Late, late Mike Burkhart. Um, and, and forgive me if I got his uh, last name incorrect, but he would, he, he, 
they would have their spread and oftentimes it would be you know uh, i didn't want to have what they were what they were serving mcdonald's and, it would be mcdonald's and so i i was like i'd go through the freezer and you go you know i found like these these vegetarian bean burgers and i was like i didn't want anything too heavy before the game so i'd go hey can you warm up a couple of these bean burgers? And then I'd have like a guacamole or an avocado on it or something like that. Oh my God. And we go to Chicago three, four times a year. So I'd see him 15 to 20 times, times, you know, the 10 years that we work, we work together 12 years. And so uh, every day I'd have a bean burger and Todd would walk past while I'm eating the bean burger and be like, Hey Joe, what you got there? And I'd be like, because I'm a quieter sort of like oh you know what I don't like being blown up sort of thing, but I'm also not go- I'm not going to react, and so Todd's bigger, louder, bolder, and so clashing personalities. But he blew me up in front of the group, and I'd be like, I tried to be nice, and I'd be like, I got a bean burger here, and he'd be like, <laughs> and he'd be like so from that point forward for the you know six, seven, eight years, however long we played together, he'd be like, Hey, Joe. You're going to have a bean burger today? You oh had a good game God. last hey. time you had a bean burger. Oh, hey. my God. The best part yeah. was I'm, wa- I'm walking around with the McDonald's, two double cheeseburgers before the game, and he's crushing a, 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 per- a homer or two and a double and making a diving play down the line, though. That's what worked. All day. Large fries, two double cheeseburgers, and away we went, man. Joey, hey, man. appreciate you coming on here with us, man. Yeah, yeah thanks for great. having me, guys. Dude, Joey, it's you're the man. Nice Nice uh, to you see too, you again. buddy. All the best, man. Get healthy and start taking those walks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can promise you, hey, I can promise you when I'm done with this, uh, when I'm done with this little back and forth, I'll forget about it. So take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> uh